My name is Jason Vincent. I'm with Norwich Community Development Corporation. I've been asked to moderate this uh, debate this evening, this afternoon. Uh, first, we want to thank some of the main sponsors for the debate, uh, Four Plus Federal Credit Union, Norwich Magazine, Norwich Public Utilities, the Norwich Sunrise Rotary, the Old Times Catering, the Bolton, the Savings Institute Bank and Trust, and a very special thank you to Three Rivers Community College for hosting today's events. Uh, I'm going to introduce the debate teams for uh, this debate, the 3.30 session. We have the Three Rivers Middle College Magnet High School, which will be on the negative side. If you could state your name, please. My name is Maya. I'm Connor. I'm Samuel. And I'm Justin. Great. And on the affirmative will be Noah Shree Academy. Parker. Elizabeth. Selena. Great, and our judges for this afternoon's session are Mr. Bill Champagne, he's president of the Knowledge Historic Society, a local realtor. Uh, Mr. William Stutz is the assistant professor of communication at Three Rivers Community College, thank you. And uh, filling in is Karen uh, Eichstein, Eichstein, excuse Eichstein. me, with uh, UCFS. Right. Thank you for, for helping out today. Got a whole bunch of instructions here. So our speaking order and responsibilities will be as such. First affirmative, constructive, we'll have five minutes. Cross-examination will be two minutes. There'll be a three minute break following that. Our first negative constructive will be five minutes with a cross-examination of two minutes in a three-minute break. Uh, second affirmative construction of five minutes, a cross-examination of two minutes with a three-minute break. And a second of ne negative constructive for five minutes with a cr cross-examination for two minutes with a three-minute break. We will then go through our first rebuttal for a negative and affirmative, each have three. And a second rebuttal of negative and affirmative, each have three. Our timekeeper. Uh, is Nicole Amante. She's sitting here in the front. She has yellow cards. She'll hold up a yellow card when there are 30 seconds left and a pink card to stop. I will enforce those rules rigorously. Just want to say that. Uh, a couple <laughs> things here. There are, there are exits to, uh, I believe they're left and right. I know there's blinds there, but we'll take care of that. There's an emergency. Restrooms are located down the, right down the hall on the D wing. And uh, please turn off your cell phone if you have one on you. Please do not applaud until the entire debate is finished. And then when both teams are ready to begin, please read the resolve statement, which is such, the common state standard should be repealed by the United States Department of Education as a framework for teaching and learning. Our first affirmative. today that the Common Core State Standards should be repealed by the United States Department of Education as a framework for teaching and learning. Um, I just want to start you off with some key definitions of our argument. Um, first, I'd like to define Common Core Standards as the initiatives currently being pushed by the federal government to adopt uniform learning goals and reading and math for students K-12. I'd like to define the term high stakes testing. Uh, as consisting of standardized tests that determine a student's acceptance to college or graduation from high school. Finally, I'd like to define socioeconomic inequality uh, as the vast disparity between the social and economic statuses of working class Americans and middle and upper class Americans. Um, now I'll move on to our three contentions. Our first contention is that the Common Core perpetuates socioeconomic inequality. Our second contention is that Common Core values only uh, a narrow type of education, which suppresses creativity and individuality. And our third contention is that the Common Core violates states' individual rights to determine educational standards that benefit their students. Um, so I'll just go right ahead and start getting into our first contention. So, Common Core perpetuates socioeconomic inequality. It's clear that a lack of education is tied to poverty. Um, there have been many studies done about that. And people with a higher level of education, uh, especially people with advanced degrees, such as college degrees, make more money um, in general. While Common Core standards uh, can be seen as a way to combat poverty, they attempt to treat a system of poverty rather than poverty themselves. And they enforce a socioeconomic divide by holding students of different backgrounds to the same standards and essentially setting them up to fail. Additionally, because school funding is tied to test scores, failing schools whose population usually consists of students from lower socioeconomic uh, statuses 
are trapped in a cycle of not having high enough test scores because they don't have enough funding um, for their education in their schools. So just to clarify that, um, because funding in the schools is tied to success in the test, the schools who do poorly in the test are um, uh, do not receive the same amount of funding as the <coughs> schools that do well in the test. It's sort of a, a perpetuating, self-perpetuating cycle. Um, uh, additionally, uh, and we saw this in the, the No Child Left Behind Act, um, which is a program very sim was very similar close to Common Core, that failed to improve equal access to good education because uh, they deprived family schools of the resources that they needed to um, succeed. Um, uh, we can see this problem especially in urban schools. As more people flock to the suburbs, their tax base increases and their schools produce better results because they have more funding. Um, it's, a, it's a positive feedback loop where as more people move to the suburbs because their schools are good, their schools become better and urban schools um, suffer as a result. The cost per student of of implementing the Common Core is about $30, uh, not including the associated technology, which most schools um, also uh, implement concurrently, um, which may not seem like a lot, uh, but many areas with uh, taxpayers, impoverished taxpayers of uh, low socioeconomic status um, would not, uh, it would be very difficult for those taxpayers uh, to be able to support um, these new Common Core requirements, uh, despite the um, funding that comes from the state and the federal government. Um, upgrading technology, which uh, most schools do uh, as well um, as adopting the Common Core, is also expensive. Uh, schools in wealthy districts can do this easily, um, but schools in poverty stricken areas will have trouble raising the money. Um, if, for example, in Maryland, uh, they announced that it would cost $100 million to install the uh, technology necessary for their new test aligned with Common Core standards. Um, in Connecticut, with the, the Smarter Balance test, we did something very similar. Um, and I can tell you from my personal experience that uh, rolling out the test was not, uh, although NFA fortunately has the technology, rolling out the test was not smooth at all. And um, schools that would be adopting the technology uh, anew would have uh, even more trouble than we did. socioeconomic equality by uh, perpetuating a system of education um, of schools that already lack educational funding because of a low uh, and impoverished tax base being starved of funds as they're unable to succeed in the tests. So basically there's just not enough money for some towns to afford it, which means they don't have the right equipment? Yes, and then the, the other part that's connected to that is and because they don't have the right equipment, they're not able to su succeed at the test. And because they can't succeed at the test, they are unable to receive funding from the federal government. Okay, so do power schools before Common Core was created, did they already struggle to have better grades in their school? Yes, uh, and one of the reasons is the No Child Left Behind Act, which implemented a very similar system of starving, failing districts of the funds that they need to actually improve their test schools. So then what, what difference was there actually between before and after Common Core was created? Uh, it's more of a difference of uh, scale. The, the Common Core, uh, the No Child Left Behind Acts were not as binding as the Common Core is. Um, and states were essentially uh, coerced into adopting the Common Core standards because uh, because the standards were um, uh, copyright protected, and so uh, states either needed to adopt them in full or to develop their own, which cost a lot of money, another socioeconomic issue for most states, or um, they would no longer receive the, the federal funding from the uh, Race to the Top initiative. 
Okay, so what happens if a school simply cannot afford time? Three minutes, timekeeper. exist or not as a scale upon which a plate holds the future of your child, their hopes, their dreams, their potentials, their happiness. Every great thing your child could ever achieve by receiving an education that holds its students to a high standard rests in this plate. And on the other plate is money. If I were to ask the parents in this room how much they value their child, I don't think it would be very hard to imagine the answer I would get. Do you think your child is worth one million dollars? Two million? How about a billion dollars? No, of course not. I'd imagine that many of you would value your children as priceless and would do almost anything to see if they succeed in this world. So will you let somebody stand between them and the amazing things they're capable of achieving? Allow them to be prepared for the future ahead of them by offering them a high standard of education. Now, the negative team brought up several points that I would like to address. The first being that the Common Core perpetuates socioeconomic inequality by pushing Common Core into schools that really can't afford the technology to fully implement the system as well as they can. Um, the government is actually, to counter that, the government is actually providing money for the, to, the technology and for the full implementation of Common Core, so that's a little bit smoother of a transition. Um, they did mention that No Child Left Behind, and I see that they're trying to, kind of trying to equate the No Child Left Behind with Common Core, but that's not the case. Common Core is being replaced because No Child Left Behind failed. I mean, I'm sorry, No Child Left Behind is being replaced because Common Core failed. Wow. No child left behind is a bigger place because it failed. That's why we're putting in Common Core. So Common Core uh, raises the standards for your children in the school. Now that's not saying that every child has to be work at the uh, one curriculum. You have to always meet these certain homework demands every single day, same demands. Um, we are, the Common Core is still allowing flexibility within the school system to choose curriculum or books or whatever the child needs, moving at the child's pace. Common Core is just a set of standards um, 
that are a little bit higher than today's standards, we're not forcing a certain curriculum on a child in today's school system. Also, they said that um, Common Core creates inequality. Uh, I believe they're specifically referring to economic inequality. And I would like to counter that with uh, some evidence here by Michelle Reed. Uh, it says, from state to state, children are measured by different bars of excellence. A kid is fortunate to be born into a family in Massachusetts, which, according to many measures, is the country's top performing state. What about, what about those who, by no fault of their own, live in Wyoming? There, a student could be doing well by local standards, but find yourself a full year behind someone in the same grade in another state. That's like placing the basketball hoop 10 feet from the ground in California, but only 8 feet in Pennsylvania. A zip code should not be the determinant of how we measure our students or our schools. So Common Core creates equality by making it across the board. There's one set of standards. Whether you live in Connecticut or Kansas, it doesn't matter. You'll have the same amount of standards. If, you are, if I were to move from Kansas, to this state, and this state has the higher standards, I would have to work harder under our system today. Kansas has lower standards. With the same standards um, transitioning, moving from one state to the next, it's easier because I'm still working under the same standards in both states. This will, um, I come from a military family, and I know personally that uh, they have to move a lot, and it's hard for them to readjust to a new school system with new standards. If they were raised on a military base in Wyoming and they have lower standards, then they move to California to a port, then the higher standards in California will swamp them. They won't be able to keep up. Um, they also stated, their, I believe the third point was that this Common Core violates the states' rights. Um, I'd like to counter that with saying that the states accepted it so like we put it up, we put Common Core up to a vote, and 44 of the states said we want Common Core. They voted it. The government never forced anything on the states. States looked at it and saw that it was good and took it. Um, the states still get to choose the curriculum that they'll be using in the school. They're not for We're not forcing one type of curriculum on any of the states. They can use whatever books they want. Common Core is just one set of standards that makes it a little easier for everybody to get around. Um, states can still do whatever they want within the system. There's still flexibility. It allows for creativity within the school system. Thank you. Could you um, clearly define your contentions? Yeah, so our contentions was that um, Common Core will raise the standards, that Common Core will create equality across the board, and those, let's see, yeah, no, they will raise standards and create equality across the board for every student. Uh, how do you define equality? I define equality as having every student under the same standard working towards the same goal. Uh, could you explain how um, the Common Core does not force a set curriculum? Yes. So Common Core, when you implement, when the states say that they're implementing Common Core, they say that we're going to have these certain standards. Uh, the government isn't saying you have to have this curriculum to meet these standards. You can you can choose any way you wish to meet those standards, any curriculum, any way you want to, as long as you meet those standards. Um, uh, wouldn't teachers be more inclined to teach the test to raise their school's funding and therefore adopt a very rigid curriculum? So they can teach the test, I suppose, as you're saying, but really the whole goal is for overall raising of the child's um, education level, which can be done with the test. Isn't the, uh, isn't the only way Common Core measures that uh, raising of level of education by standardized tests? No, that is one of the ways to check whether they are progressing. They isn't increasing any more standardized testing. Um, it's just one certain way you can check. There are several, many ways to check a child's educational development. Could you name some? Yeah, Time. so. Time. Okay. Have 
continue our um, affirmation of um, our uh, contentions. So um, Parker left off uh, with our contention that the Common Core um, increases socioeconomic inequality. I would like to continue with our second contention, which is that Common Core values only one type of narrow education, which uh, suppresses creativity and individuality. So imagine for a moment that you go to a department store. And on the shelves, there's just one size, one style of clothes. No two human bodies are alike. And likewise, no two human minds are alike. So why are we trying to standardize education? Um, no, because no two students' minds are alike, they don't learn at the same pace, they don't learn the same way. Um, and so to force children to um, compromise themselves to uh, pass a test is wrong. Um, the Common Core focuses only on reading and math, which prepares students for standardized tests, but not necessarily for the real world. Um, I'd like to point out that uh, David Coleman, the president of the College Board, co-wrote these standards. Um, and so there's a very obvious conflict of interest there um, in that he is uh, setting up these tests um, in a way that is similar to, you know, the College Board tests. Um, common Core standards are high-stakes tests that pile on more stress um, onto teenagers and children. Um, one of our sources gave an anecdote from Dawn Laborde, and uh, she told reporters that her son became so anxious from Common Core that she had to take him to a doctor. Um, I can attest as a student who takes AP classes, um, who took the SAT and the ACT, that it is very stressful. And um, it's, it's hard on teenagers to, um, to uh, try to meet these very difficult standards. Um, furthermore, um, there was an anecdote from a citizen of Bozier City, Louisiana, and uh, they said that I cannot believe the amount of homework that first graders are coming home with. Um, furthermore, high schoolers across the country take up to 20 standardized tests, that is, you know, high stakes national tests. Um, and students in third to eighth grade take an average of 10 tests. Um, finally, I, I would like to say that the United States is a home of entrepreneurship. As our testing scores have gone down, our innovations have gone up. Apple and Google were not founded in China or Finland. They were founded in the United States where our citizens are creative and these standards would suppress creativity. Um, our third contention is that Common Core violates states' individual rights to determine educational standards that will benefit their students. <coughs> so Common Core is a federally mandated program even though the Constitution leaves education as a power reserved to the states. Um, the federal government allows for states to come up with their own set of standards comparable to Common Core, but such standards are rarely um, cost effective to produce. So, for example, Virginia and Texas decided to write their own standards, but it came at a large cost to um, taxpayers. So, uh, local communities should be in charge of educating their children. The Department of Education was not created until 1979, and before that, states and local government controlled education when, Amer uh, when American education was number one in the world. Um, additionally, to compete for race to the top benefits, states de facto had to adopt these standards. Um, for example, within two months of the standards release, 28 states, ad states adopted the standards, and because the standards are copyright protected, states were coerced to adopt the standards in full. And so, um, to uh, restate my contention, I would like to say that Common Core values only one type of uh, education, which suppresses creativity and individuality, and in turn causes stress um, to students. Um, I can even attest to the fact that um, these young children are, are um, being forced to uh, 
undergo lots of stress. I just saw my um, my dad and his uh, stepmom's daughter's son is in first grade, and he has um, you know two to three hours of homework every day. <laughs> My first question is, you're talking about how it's costing a lot of money to raise the standards, right? Mm -hmm. Is raising the standards in general ever cheap? I'm sorry? In general, is raising the standards for anything, whether it be education or maybe a sports team or something like that, is raising the standards ever cheap? That's, that's what I'm arguing. It can't be achieved um, because uh, as we're trying to standardize people's minds, you know, it's it's impossible. Okay. It's like so I meant cheap. As in oh, cheap. cheap. I'm sorry. sorry. I thought you said a cheap. <laughs> um, no, it's not cheap. But I believe that there are other alternatives that that you know states could be adopting that are uh, more cost effective than. Okay. Right. And then my second question, I was trying to ask earlier, what happens if a school simply cannot afford it? If a school simply can't afford the test, um, whether it be because of um, a impoverished tax base or um, lack of school funding, then, you know, if they, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, okay. Um, I have one question. You mentioned escalated level of stress due to more standardized testing. Is this incident of extra stress Due to Common Core localized or national? I believe it's national. Okay. And I have one more quick one. Um, the federal government, mm -hmm. the senators, who do they represent? They're sometimes their constituents and sometimes they represent their own beliefs because they um, are being lobbied or because they believe that um, their decisions are more important than the choice of their constituents. But House representatives are chosen by the states. Right. Hi. Right. We'll have a three minute break, timekeeper. advocating for reform to the foreign worker visa program because there is an adequate number of highly educated engineers, computer programmers, and data scientists coming out of our universities to power the workforce. In our increasingly global economy, American students are getting beat. Basically what this is saying is that the biggest companies in America 
they would rather go somewhere else than America to hire people because there just simply are not enough people coming out of college who are qualified to work these jobs. So the whole point of Common Core is to get these people ready for college. You can't succeed in college if you're not ready. And then uh, next, they were talking about how there's no money. And I asked them during cross-examination, what happens if a school cannot afford the test? And their answer was that they don't know. And I'd like to argue that a reason why there's not enough money is because this is a brand new program. It's only in its um, early years of life. And whenever you implement anything, especially on a national scale, it's going to cost a lot of money. If you look at any national program, it costs a lot of money. But the types of costs that these schools can't afford are one-time costs. You don't have to buy brand new computers every year to administer these tests. And you don't have to retrain your teachers every single year to Common Core. I mean, yes, you have to update their training, but you don't have to completely reteach how these teachers should be running their classrooms. So because the, the money arguments, those are all based on the current costs, I'm sure these costs will go down because they're simply implementation costs. And because America needs higher educated students coming out of college, uh, and because stress and anxiety, none of that is a unique argument to Common Core. It's just super stressful to be a high school student. And Common Core really does not only value one type of education. It values skills over facts. They want to teach people how to learn rather than teach them facts. And it's for those reasons that we believe we should not be using Common Core in our country. Thank you for your question. We agree that Common Core isn't necessarily about uh, memorizing curriculum, uh, but do you believe that all the skills that students, uh, that Common Core students will learn uh, to prepare them for their standardized tests necessarily have a place in the real world uh, or in college? Well, no matter what system you're using, standardized tests, are the skills you need to pass those tests, they're not helpful. So whether it's the SAT, ACT, or the Common Core tests, you will not learn any real skills by trying to pass those tests. So uh, if the Common Core is trying to improve test scores as, uh, or is trying to prove that improved test scores uh, equal improved education in the United States, then um, doesn't that mean that uh, this is false? Um, it's not exactly false because if you look at the Common Core standards, they're not saying you have to have a certain score on this test. What they're saying is that the child has to be college and career ready. Weren't the Common Core standards developed? Uh, uh, one of the principal reasons that they were developed uh, wasn't it because uh, the U.S. was falling behind in international um, standardized tests? Yes. Okay. Um, I would also like to um, ask whether you believe that um, the um, Okay, do you think that the lack of preparedness um, in our uh, student base is more important than lack of creativity? Um, I'd like to point out that Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, didn't graduate from high school or college. You know, he, um, I'm sorry, he didn't graduate from college. Um, so, uh, which do you believe is more important? Yes, that's, that's where I was going. Uh, creativity or time. Yeah. About three minutes, time people. We'll go into rebuttals. There'll be no breaks between the rebuttals. Okay.
Chamber. We will now go for three minute rebuttals. There will be no break in between. We will start with the first negative rebuttal. Time people, are you ready? Okay, begin. All right. So there's a lot of issues surrounding Common Core. But I think, I believe that the Teacher of the Year in Delaware 2013 best summarizes it with, with fewer and clearer higher expecta expectations for students, the standards allow for more meaningful instruction and fuller understanding by students. Justice Brandon C. famously wrote that states labor laboratories of democracy implementation of higher standards work in Massachusetts. Why won't they work in other places? From this, we can see that there has been success, and it was successful in Massachusetts. Along with all of this, Common Core brings a higher standard of math and English base. This would allow students to succeed in college and be able to compete against foreign countries for our top foundations nowadays, such as Apple and Google, who are now looking into foreign countries due to the lack of success in America. Common Core also understands that each student is different in how they learn. And through their standardized tests, they don't see how successful the students are, but what they can do for the students. Along with all of this, Common Core brings a standard to America. They allow us to go from California to Connecticut, from Florida to Alaska. They allow everyone to learn the same and understand what each other is. With all of this, they don't box in your creativity. Common Core is just like any other school. They teach you the same things. They're not looking at you and saying, no, you can't dream to be an astronaut. We want to give you those skills you can be in to be an astronaut. We want to give you a strong basis to what you can learn. In. Along with all of this, money has been a large issue. However, what Sam and Justin have brought up are strong, stand are strong explanations of how everything new on a nationwide basis is going to cost money. Nothing's free. But with the time and effort, we'll be able to create a new standard for America that puts us up there in top-ranking countries. With all of this being said, America should be, the Common Core should be implemented into American schools because not only can it benefit us as a country, but it can also benefit our students and how they learn. With the new information that we obtained from Common Core, not only will we maybe be able to create a set standard in the U.S., but around the world one day. With this being said, it is a great implementation to have in the United States, and it is a great implementation for us as a nation to have in our schools. Fine. Okay, we're looking for the first affirmative rebuttal. Thank you, Brody Rice. Begin. Hello again. Um, I just want to start by addressing uh, one of the points made in a uh, previous cross examination. Our opponents have readily admitted that uh, high state or standardized testing, I believe, is what he said, um, does not preparing for standardized testing does not prepare students for skills in the real world. And uh, I agree with him. The only problem is the Common Core values evaluating um, education through standardized tests. It was developed out of a, a desire for the U.S. to catch up with other countries in standardized tests. But if the skills that are being applied to these standardized tests have no value in the real world, then is it common for missing its fundamental goal? Um, another thing I'd like to address is that uh, you mentioned standards for astronauts. And um, a, a big part of common for is making sure that um, the, the sciences, or specifically, uh, math uh, scores are raised, um, but what about standards for other curricula, uh, for other jobs like artists and uh, historians and other, especially creative people? Um, the Common Core only focuses on English and math scores, and it um, it uh, does not necessarily prepare students for. Um, the real world in situations outside of math and science uh, and English. Um, another issue, uh, another thing our opponents mentioned was that um, the Common Core is not a curriculum. While this is 
technically true. The curriculum that is being developed is related to the standards of the Common Core. So if you go and you look at a math book in your classroom, it's going to say Common Core Curriculum on it. And if you'll notice, the textbook company Pearson uh, was one of the major developers of the Common Core. So the ties between the Common Core standards and new curriculums are quite clear. Uh, finally, I'd, I'd just like to go back through and uh, restate our contentions. <coughs> Um, Common Core perpetuates socio-economic inequality by uh, by starving schools that need it most of the funds that they uh, of the funds that they need to improve success on standardized tests. Um, Common Core values only one type of education, like I said, only math and English, um, and preparing for standardized tests, leaving out. Um, Skills that might be needed in the real world and skills that might be needed outside of math and science. Um, We're looking for the second negative. We have three minutes. So, first off, my name is Maya. And I went to public school until the fourth grade and I switched to private school. And immediately, I saw the differences between public school standards and private school standards. And they are two very completely different things. Common Core is raising the standards so that everyone all over can meet the same standards without feeling stressed. Yes, we will have to be tested in order to see where we are, but in the end, we will be able to be on the same level, on one accord. Now, one of my opponents had said that students don't learn at the same pace and we all have different minds, but Common Core will be able to help us see, help us know our pace, and will help us to see that everyone does have a different mind and that we are able to meet the standards that Common Core is trying to implement, which is math and English, which are two very important subjects, and if, as some of you know, who are seniors, SAT scores are only accepting reading scores and math scores, which are the only two standards that Common Core is trying to let us know that we need to focus on these so that we can be better and succeed as students. All curriculum today have to meet a certain standard, which is approved by Common Core. You had also mentioned earlier that Common Court will increase the poverty level in certain areas, but Common Core is all, will be providing the money to help students meet the standards that Common Core wants us to meet. In closing, change is hard, yes, especially when it comes to education reform. I am no stranger to that. But we can really afford to let politics and other roadblocks created by adults get in the way of what our kids need, which is by Michelle Ray. Okay, we're looking for the second affirmative rebuttal. Three minutes, are you ready time? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd first like to uh, start out by um, going back to some points that were made in um, rebuttals. So um, one of my opponents asked me um, who senators represent, and it's their constituents. But senators did not create the Common Core. The Department of Education did, and the Department Edu of Education does not care what I think. Um, Common Core um, is tied to graduation similar to um, previous standardized tests through the No Child Left Behind Act, like the CMTs and CAPS, um, they are tied to progressing to the next level. So say um, a student is, very, is uh, struggling with quadratics, and um, the uh, Common Core math test has many quadratics, and they fail. Do they have to stay back until they um, understand quadratics? A year, two years, how long will it take them? Because no two minds are alike. Um, furthermore, 
uh, Common Core is helping to create a, uh, a math and English um, hierarchy. So those who pass math and English tests are able to succeed because they um, can graduate and go on to college. Um, and um, through focusing on um, math and English solely, um, the, the Common Core um, is neglecting other fields of um, curricula that are desperately needed in this world, like artists, artisans, um, economists, um, architects, um, historians, uh, writers. Um, and uh, just because the SATs um, focus on math and English does not mean that Common Core should. Um, many uh, college professionals um, are arguing that SATs are outdated and furthermore colleges don't only ask for SAT scores, they ask for essays because they know that the SAT is not a um, full representation of a student's potential in a student's mind just as Common Core tests do not um, pander to the depths and crannies of of a student's mind like one-on-one um, -on -one teaching would, where students are free to explore what they're passionate about um, and they don't have to um, stick to a standardized test. Um, thank you. Thank you. The common state standards should be repealed by the United States Department of Education as a framework for teaching and learning. Uh, this debate is concluded. Well, give the judges a couple minutes to tally their sheets and answer that. Sponsors, Core Plus Federal Credit Union, Knowledge Magazine, Knowledge Public Utilities, Knowledge Sunrise Rotary, Old Times Catering, The Bulletin, The Savings Institute Bank and Trust, and a very special thank you to Three Rivers Community College for hosting today's festivities. I'm going to introduce the debate teams. Uh, I have uh, Plainfield High School Team 1 speaking in the negative side. Uh, I'm disoriented right now, excuse me, which one's the negative team here? Because we have two teams from the same high school. So do you state your name, please? Adrian Laurent. Curtis Lucicero. Shadi Laurent. And then debating uh, their classmates from Plainfield High School on the affirmative side. Alexander Crusoe. Richard Tobolsky. Richard Brown. Great, excellent, thank you. Uh, our judges for this afternoon will be Dr. Yvette Jacaruso, a retired school administrator from the Gough Broughton Public Schools and chairman of the Knowledge Board of Education. Uh, it'll be uh, Barry Shedd, who is uh, a past president of the Knowledge Rotary Club number 6747 and manager of the Savings Institute. Thank you, Barry, one of our sponsors. And then uh, Mr. Andrew Nolman, who is the current president of the Knowledge Rotary and chairman of the Greater Knowledge Area Chamber of Commerce. So I'm going to review the debate rules. The order of speeches will be the first affirmative, constructive. They'll have five minutes. Cross-examination will have two. There'll be a three-minute break. First negative constructive will have five minutes. There'll be a cross-examination for two minutes. There'll be a three-minute break. Second affirmative constructive will have five minutes. Cross-examination will have two. There'll be a three-minute break. Second negative constructive will be five minutes. Cross-examination of two minutes. There'll be a three-minute break. We'll then go through the rebuttals. 
They'll each be three minutes long. There'll be no breaks in between. First negative, first affirmative, second negative, second affirmative. The timekeepers will hold up a yellow card, 30 seconds, and a pink card for stop. Uh, the timekeepers are sitting up here in the front row. They're with the Three Rivers Community College Education Success students, so thank you for doing that. You can see, hope everybody can see that. Great. Yes. Uh, yellow will be the 30 seconds remaining, and then the pink will be stopped. And I'll be enforcing the, uh, that rule. Okay. I will not be enforcing the 30 seconds. Uh, the exit signs are to the left and right. There's some blinds kind of blocking the door there, but trust me, there's one there. If there's a problem, we will uh, help you get out. Uh, if you have to use the restrooms, they're uh, down the hall on the right-hand side. Uh, please turn off your cell phones if you do have one on you. Uh, do not applause until the debate is finished. So thank you for doing that. Uh, I will now read the resolution. The common state standard should be repealed by the United States Department of Education as a framework for teaching and learning. Timekeeper, are you ready? Our first speaker in the first affirmative constructive is Alex from Plainfield. You have five, you have five minutes. Begin. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Alexander Caruso, and my partners are Richard Dabalski, Hirsch Patel, and Brooklyn Brown. We are defending the firm of that resolution. The Common Core State Standard should be repealed by the United States Department of Education as a framework for teaching and learning. We first define our terms and we will develop, delve into our contentions. We define the terms standards as set rules and regulations, repeal to nullify completely, framework, framework for teacher and learn, teaching and learning, guidelines to build off of. Our contentions are the common core standards put unnecessary stresses and pressures on students, parents, teachers, and districts. Our second contention is common, the common core rollout is a political game and is not in the students' best interests. And our third contention is that deep problems and hypocrisies exist within the Common Core framework itself. Now on to my, our first contention, that the Common Core stands for unnecessary stress on teachers, parents, students, and districts. Rigorous, test, rigorous standardized testing sucks the life out of law schools. That was said by the Education Secretary, Arian Duncan, if you would like to cite that on um, page three. Well, even more heavy standardized testing fix this as Common Core evaluates through standardized testing. Strict testing environments can cause, can stress students out, especially if 60 to 80 days are vote of school out of the 180 day school year are devoted to testing. Some, this has caused some students to become reluctant to go to school as common core standards are starting to be implemented around the country. It's stressing them out. Some have resorted to taking even drugs like Xanax to ease the stress. And one final thing, every student will know that extra stress will hurt test scores. If they know that they've been practicing for a test for months on end, it's going to be stressful, seeing as how their beloved teacher is being graded on this. For parents, they are stressed along with their kids if they're concerned for their kids. They're stressed. They're stressed that the kids might be taking recreational drugs, and they're stressed about these new regulations that they didn't have when they were in school. They don't know what's happening. They're disconnected from the system now. And teachers, Teachers are probably one of the most stressed out people around. Their performance depends on their quality of mind. And if they're stressed out, that's dangerous. They have to meet checkpoints every year where they need to, where they need to pass a certain way. It is said in the article that their pay and jobs are tied to these scores. That's a scary thing for a teacher to think about. If they know that these tests are exactly how they will be hired and fired, the only logical solution to that is to preserve your job and teach the test, and that's not help your students. And also, on districts, it's stressful in districts economically. Resources are limited in many districts. Common Core requires so many resources. It requires extra textbooks. It requires expensive computers. California gave $1.25 billion towards the Common Core. And that's being even questioned whether it's worth it or not. In common corporate stresses on teachers, on schools, and finding the best teachers to put tests out, not the best teachers to connect to students. On to my second contention, the common core rollout is a political game and not in the students' best interests. First of all, let's start off with how the states, there's a whole mess with the states. 44 states, not all of them, have voted to initially adopt 
common core. Since now, since then, 12 have dropped out. Why have they dropped out? Because they disagree with these new standards. Many jumped into these standards when they were put out because the government was offering money to, from the Race to the Top program. I would even go as far to say that they were bribed with this Race to the Top program. This is the government trying to get around the Tenth Amendment of the Constitution. All power not given to the United States government by the Constitution is reserved to the states or the people. Also, Race to the Top, the, the program I mentioned, it flies in the face of Common Core's ideals to bring everyone together. The com race to the top is exactly how it implies. Thank you. It promotes states jumping over each other. That's why so many signed up in the beginning, and now they're dropping out because I can see the flaws in the argument. Now, as I see, I won't have enough time to develop my third contention. My partner, Richard Tavolsky, has the second constructive. Constructive. I now open myself up to cross examination. Do you acknowledge that before the Common Core was implemented, standardized tests were a part of public education? It's a yes or no, please. I do. Thank you. Uh, if Common Core is repealed, will we still be using standardized tests? Yes. Thank you. And will these uh, standardized testing questions still cause students to stress? Well, it's a yes or no. Not unnecessary stress, no. So you're saying that the Common Core standard test somehow provide more stress to the students than any other standardized test? That's exactly what I'm saying. For what purpose? Because these tests are going to be rolled out because the schools and teachers are being But how does this design. affect the students? In what way are they given more stress than any other standardized test, considering that they're performing the same test? It's not the same test, though. I they're think what my partner is trying to ask is, are there any direct studies within the information provided that give you the right to say that this extra stress or even drug use that you alluded to is due to the Common Core? Yes or no? Actually, on page three, I believe, it states that parents and teachers are work they can't even bring the students there to school anymore, and the lack of productivity in classrooms is dropping. There's a specific quote, and yeah, uh, I have a question. Uh, how many uh, hours out of that 60 to 80 days that you cited are actually devoted to testing? So I'm asking on a specific day, is it a full day, is it a half day, is it 15 minutes of testing? Do you know that specific number? It's The specific day comment is about how a class will focus completely on that. So not specifically testing? On the testing. On oh, the so, it's not, so it's not testing? Yes, it is testing. Okay. No. Is, it, is it testing or not testing? It's testing. How many hours is it testing? How many hours are being tested? Well, that depends on how long the scheduling is and how the process right, thank works. You. Um, one final question. You said that practicing for an exam for months yields more stress. Is there any possible way that could yield preparedness and confidence? Hi. There'll be a three minute time to prepare for the next speaker.
is going to have five minutes for the first negative and constructive. Hi, my name is Lydia Nottage. Again, I'm here with my team from Plainfield High School to negate the resolution that the Common Core State Standards should be repealed by the United States Department of Education as a framework for teaching and learning. I'd like to first state our three contentions and then I will go back and divulge into those contentions and kind of highlight the main points of them. Our first contention is that implementation takes time in order for a program to become effective. Our second contention is that Common Core prepares students for key skills and concepts important for getting them college ready. And our third contention is that access to a standard quality public education is the spine to our country's present and future. Going into our first contention, any program you're going to make, implementation is going to take time for it to become an effective program. The Common Core will improve with the time invested in its implementation. Uh, these implementation efforts should be led locally by teachers with support from their respective states and districts. This is a method that is proven to work best. The federal government does not really govern the Common Core state standards and implementation as most of it is left up to the state and district itself as well as the teachers. And the government has already invested an ample amount of time into preparing Common Core, so if the implementation is rolled out correctly, the program will be effective and therefore should not be repealed. I'd like to now go into my second contention that Common Core prepares students for key skills and concepts that are important for getting college ready. Common Core is designed to build upon the most advanced current thinking and preparing all students for success in college, career, and life. These standards were created by the best in the country, and they were informed by the highest international standards, and there was evidence and expertise about the educational outcomes of what this program can get people ready for. Um, the English language arts standards require certain critical content for all students, including classical myths and stories from around the world, America's founding documents, uh, foundational American literature, and Shakespeare. And the mathematics standards lay a solid foundation in whole numbers, addition, multiplication, subtraction, fractions, and decimals. I'd like to now go into our third contention. The access to standard quality public education is the spine to our country's present and future. All students who live in the U.S. deserve and have the right, regardless of their ethnicity, their sex, where they live, whether their family's poor, rich, um, their religion, their status of citizenship, to an equal educational opportunity. If you live in America and you're under the age of 18, you have a right to equal education as any other kid under the age of 18 living in America. America is founded upon the Declaration of Independence, which gives us the rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Equal education is included in the fundamental rights of the Constitution. We can never truly be free without access to a quality education. Anything less than the most important opportunity will continue to misrepresent the foundation of our country itself. We are not ranked in the top 20 in the world educationally, and without equal access, we are essentially sabotaging our own future by ourselves. We need to focus on education and ensure that every child in this country has a chance. And with that, I would like to open myself up to cross-examination. So you said that implementation takes time at your cross-examination, is that correct? Yes. All right. Would you, do you really want to gamble with that time, with that transitional period for our students? What do you mean? There is a certain margin of students who are in that implementation area. They're in that implementation time block. Are they being thrown to the wolves? No, whenever you instate a new program, it's going to take time to get ready to. This isn't just something we've come before. But you're saying so that these students who are doing the implementation are not getting access to the standardized good quality education as the third paragraph suggests. No, that's not what we're saying. We're saying that for it to be completely effective everywhere, it will take time and it will get better as time goes on. Thank but you. we're not saying it's 100% ineffective right now. Thank you. 
were the amounts of standardized testing before common core state standards? Less? Well, yes, because common core Thank has... You. that Common Core prepares students for life in your second intention, yes. is that correct? And you also state in your second intention that it focuses on certain critical content. Yes. How was that critical content deemed important or critical? Well, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what that critical content is since. We have three minute break uh, between <coughs> Richard Zabalski, and I'm here with my partners Alex Hirsch from Brooklyn to affirm the resolution that the Common Core State Standards should be repealed by the United States Department of Education as a framework for teaching and learning. Now, I will briefly go back over what the contentions that we have are, being that the Common Core puts unnecessary stress on students, teachers, parents, and the district. The Common Core rollout is a political game and is not within the student's best interests 
and there's deep problems within the Common Core framework itself. Now my partner, Alex, was unable to finish Contention 2, so I will leave, I will continue where he left off. Now, <clears throat> so in the Common Core, there are companies that are supplying things for the Common Core to, for these standardized testings, such as many of these tests are going to be taken on the computer, so companies such as Microsoft will be supplying schools with computers in order to take these tests. And Pearson Publishing, one of the biggest publishing companies out there, will be supplying textbooks for the Common Core so that they'll be ready for these tests. Now then, they will be making a lot of money off of these um, sales with schools, and by making with, with all this money um, coming into them, they'll be able to finance and teach many of their new workers that they get out of these schools because of what they're learning, um, how to do their job. And the problem with this is that many of these workers are learning specifically math and English because the Common Core prep pushes these onto them. Now, when all of this money is being put into specifically math, there isn't exactly enough money going out into extracurricular activities such as sports and such as um, <clears throat> electives. So students won't be able to branch off efficiently and be able to actually go into different things that they feel they want to do. So they may not be able to find their own niche, shall we say, in schools and feel like that they actually find a place that they belong. They would have to wait until college to really see the, this growth. Now I will go on to my third contention that there are deep problems within the Common Core itself. Now, with the Common Core being focused primarily on math and English, and as I stated in the second contention, that a lot of money from these schools would be focused on math and English, what happens to foreign languages and the other co um, countries that we are competing with? Without foreign languages, how do, we fit, how do we expect to really compete if we can't have people that truly get to go overseas and work in different um, environments? And along with that, um, as my partner stated in the first contention, that the Common Course promotes teaching to the test. And as he stated, there's going to be a lot of time taken out of school days to take these tests. And at the same time, as teachers teach to the test, what's unique about the old system is that teachers, they weren't made specifically, they weren't taught specifically to teach to the test. They were all willing to be connected to the students. And this connection is important in the classroom so the students can really feel like they're learning and talking to someone and you know, connecting with someone that's teaching them. But if you teach the test, there's a disconnect. Now, I'll also go on to say that the Common Core doesn't always incorporate students with extra needs, such as disabled kids or kids with learning disabilities, because the Common Core in itself is a one-size-fits-all solution. That's what they say it is. The problem is there really isn't a one-size-fits-all solution because each person has their own needs. So if we try to fix everything in one swoop, we really can't do that. We need to take into account everything and everyone's problems. Now I will also go and talk about how <clears throat> that many states have already seen that the Common Core is having part of a big, isn't really working. So already 64% of um, states have already dropped the Common Core, leaving only 36% um, percent without, with it. Um, and many schools are not on the same page. And at the same time, we can also go into bring into account that many state, many schools aren't able to actually finance and keep up with the Common Core standards and what are what is expected from the Common Core buying these technologies and buying these books. Some schools don't have the financing. Some schools don't have all the money that they need, so they can't efficiently be in the Common Core and meet the standards that they are expected to. And with that, I open myself to cross-examination. Would you say that the status quo of education before Common Core was implemented was good or bad? I would say it was bad. I'd just like to um, verify that your team has defined repeal as to nullify completely. Yes. Therefore, you would like to abolish the Common Core completely. Yes. So there is not one good thing about it. There it's a yes good. or a no. It's a yes. So if you would abolish it completely, you're saying there is nothing worth saving about it. Sure. Thank you. Okay. I just have two questions of clarification, just yes or no. Okay. Okay, the first is in regards to you saying that 
funds would be cut from other programs in order to reallocate them towards English and math according to the Common Core. Did you say that yes or no? Yes. Okay. And the second was in regard to your partner's speech when they said that schools had dropped out because they had found that the standards were bad. Did you say that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Do you have the, the uh, statistic where it says that 64% of states have dropped out of Common Core? Because I'm confused on where you have found that statistic. Um, I do not have this. You do not, you don't, so you don't have this statistic. So can we agree that that statistic has been nullified and not in fact verified and not used? Sure. And would you be willing to acknowledge that the Common Core does in fact, um, the special education is accounted for within the program? I or are you denying that? I'm saying that the Common Core could do better to implement things that allow people with disabilities to learn. Thank so you. part of your contention is now adding the fact that the Common Core is not a suitable form of education for special education children? I'm saying that they need to be. It's not a one-size-fits-all solution. That's what the Common Core Thank is Thank you. And just one last question very quickly. Yes or no, did you say that the Common Core promotes teaching to the deaf? Yes. Okay. I'm going to take a three-minute break before the next mm -hmm. slide. Pursuit 
of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is what it says in that document that is literally what America is built on. So if you are pursuing a greater life in today's society, a college education is a huge part of that. Yes, you can join the military, and that is a very respectable and great way to go, or you could go right into the workforce. But in today's day and age, it's hard to get to what many would consider a career without a college education. And if you can't get accepted to college because you happen to be in a poorer school district, that's just not fair to that student. That They don't have the equal right to get the education that they could be striving for. And we think that's a huge part of the Common Core. This is one of the reasons we are so um, adamantly defending this program is because this program is aiming to help so many students. Yes, there are students doing very well in more affluent areas that already have these standards. These standards that they're proposing are not completely unattainable. They're very attainable and several states are doing well on them. Massachusetts is outperforming, I think every state in the country with their math and they use the Common Core system. So those are basically our three contentions and now I would like to continue to refute some of my opponents. And the main, uh, two, main contention, uh, two main points I would like to bring up is there is no study or statistic relating recreational drug use to the implementation of the Common Core. So if we would like to just have that acknowledged that that was maybe a bold statement that was made earlier. And we would also like to acknowledge that um, the amount of standardized testing is not increasing um, with the use of the Common Core. States already use standardized testing to gauge where their students are and to see to, if students are passing or not. Oh, and I now open myself up to cross-examination. Are you going to repeat the previous statement that there were less standardized testing before the Common Core? Yes, we are going to say that was a misstep in our argument. Thank you. You said that our students will be completely on par with our international peers. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Are you, are you of understanding that most of our international peers also feature foreign language as an integral part of their education system? Yes, but once again, the foreign language doesn't particularly have a place in this debate. The Common Core does not strip foreign language. But would you agree that diverting money to read, uh, reading, writing, and math would divert money from foreign language? Yes or no? Can you repeat that question, please? Would you agree that diverting funding from foreign language or other extracurriculars to stuff like math and reading. Oh, okay. If that was the case, yes, but they're, the state Thank educational you. budget is the same Thank and you. the Common Core federal budget is added for Thank the you. reading and math. You said through the Common Core, students will be learning the same skills, correct? Same skills. Could I have a little more context, please? So, English and math, they'd be on par with each other in order to go into college. Is that right? From all over the country? Well, I'm just saying what the Common Core goal is, yes, that everybody's hitting these standards as a graduate each grade. Um, I think the question is yes or no. Um, do you believe that there's a difference between prepared and ready? I would say no. And um, back to you, Alex, I would just like to clarify again, the Common Core does not suck any money away from any other existing educational program. Thank you. We'll now take a three-minute break. This will be our final three-minute break going into rebuttal. Assembly Curtis has the floor. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Curtis Cicero, and I'm happy to be here uh, from Plainfield Professor from Plainfield High School. So during this negative rebuttal stage, uh, I will just go through each of uh, my opponent's contentions and just point out why their contentions hold no water and our uh, uh, negative contentions rise to the occasion. So first, the first contention is about uh, how stress will be placed, unnecessary stress will be placed on students. We just like to point out that no matter what <coughs> happens, uh, stress will always be placed uh, on students because there will always be standardized testing uh, in a classroom environment. Uh, uh, they also talk about a 60 to 80 day, uh, day time period that they spend uh, prepping for the test and taking the test, but we don't know how many hours a day they actually prep for the test. So they could spend 15 minutes prepping for a test, or they could spend an hour a day prepping for the test, 
the affirmative team has not officially came out with uh, actual uh, a valid statistic to uh, show to us that we could get a good grasp and understanding of that. Uh, about their second contention about uh, how it's purely politics, the affirmative team brought up a a statement that we think is not very not very politically correct, and they accuse statements of bribing uh, people to adopt Common Core. Uh, we do not know where you jump to the assumptions that, that people were being bribed to accept Common Core, and we hope that you would uh, take that back. Uh, reforms, and also reform begins when a politician has an idea and they hear things out in the public that they want reform and they want things to be redone. And I think the American public is not happy with being number 26 in math and, and the international and being 21st in science internationally and being 17th in reading internationally. Uh, so going into the third contention about how it's deeply flawed, they brought up a point about how Common Core is merely a, they brought up a point how Common Core is going to obliterate foreign language. Common Core is not going to obliterate foreign language. I still take foreign language in my class at my school, so it hasn't really affected my personal experience in foreign language classes. And the Common Core is just merely a guideline, not necessarily saying you cannot have, you cannot teach foreign language. So uh, this is why I cannot stress the importance of holding on to the Common Core system. Uh, it's our duty as Americans to fix the broken educational system that has happened over the past decade. So this is why I urge the judges to uh, negate the resolution. Thank you. Time, uh, Hirsch. Hello, my name is Hirsch Patel, and I'm here to, with my team to affirm the resolution that uh, we should uh, repeal the common core state standards. First of all, I will go into my opponent's contention and say why they are um, they are not valid and good. First of all, they say that implementation takes time. Uh, Common Core has been in has been implemented since two thousand nine, so we have had we have had almost six years to see if it worked. And in that six years, almost fourteen states have. Uh, removed Common Core from their state standards. No, 12 states, I'm sorry. 12 states have removed Common Core from their state standards. 44 first started and 12 states removed. That leaves 68, 64% states that are still using Common Core. That's not even, that's like less than, that's more than 50, but it's an absurd to say that Common Core is good for all of the country if only 68% of the country actually accepts it. Even the Constitution the Amendment won't even say that we need two-thirds of the states to actually agree with something. So saying that Common Core is good is absurd. Second, it compares, um, it says that it compares people for college. That is, um, it's absurd because the states that are using Common Core and are, good, are using it well are states like Massachusetts, New York, Connecticut. They are states that already have a well-funded education system. States like Mississippi and Georgia, where they actually need Common Core, they're not even being funded well. Their, uh, their education system is being uh, overshot by prison systems. And also, they say that federal spending is a uh, our uh, tax re revenue is going to be allocated to uh, education. The only education system, the only education reform uh, funding that the federal government has ever put in was the race to the top, and only uh, and only 19 states have actually received funding from that. So not even like a good portion of the people that have accepted Common Core have received funding. Lastly, it says that um, it assesses public education, uh, it gives public education, uh, gives good public education for our future. 
uh, though they have acknowledged that um, private schools will not have to take in time. Uh, Shandor. Good evening. My name is Sean Lorange. I'm here from the Plainfield High School team, still negating today's resolution. So I'd first like to address each of our components' contentions, and then after that I'm going to go into some of the points that they've made and why these do not stand. So the first contention is that the Common Core State Standard put unnecessary stress on everyone involved, basically. And what we'd like to bring up here is that there's always going to be stress on students, and whether or not that stress is unnecessary is really to be left to the individual. There's not a way that they can say for certain that this stress would not happen with a regular standardized test. Because I, as a student, can say that in switching to new standardized tests, I have not felt any change in the stress. Standardized tests are always going to be stressful, regardless of which one I'm taking. The second contention that they have is that this is a political game, and that this isn't being done for the right reasons, is what they've alluded to. So one of the things that they've brought up is that states have dropped out, and they've said on different occasions that the states dropped out because they received funding, or because they thought the standards were bad, which they have conflicted on two different occasions because they said on one occasion that they thought the states dropped out because the standards weren't working, but on a separate occasion, they accused them of being corrupt and dropping out once they had gotten their funding. However, in their last rebuttal, they just said that most of the states hadn't received funding, so there's a lot of gray area there as to which side of that argument they're actually standing on. And their third contention is that there are deep problems with the Common Core. And in all the speeches that they've had, this contention has been left in the dark, and they were they did not cite any specific deep problems that the Common Core had. They alluded to different problems that the Common Core would cause, but those have been nullified as well, and they haven't mentioned any specific problems within the framework, to my knowledge. The other point that I'd like to bring up is that they keep mentioning about our implementation, that this could be detrimental to the students that this is being implementing on. However, we believe quite the opposite. We are upgrading their current education, if you will, so while they may not like it, we know that it's what's best for them. It may be hard for them to adjust to at first, but it's definitely in their best interest. Uh, the next point that I'd like to bring up is that they've mentioned foreign language and cutting money and funding a lot of times. So what we want to bring up there is that, yes, with the federal funding, there have been different states that have received different amounts or some that have received none, but the government is not the only one funding these kinds of things. You have the Gates Foundation. Bill and Melinda Gates is an excellent example of a foundation that's very committed to putting things into this Common Core program. So the states are not left to their own to develop the resources that they need for this. The other point that I'd like to bring up about this is that one point that has come up is about teaching to the test, and they said in a cross-examination that the Common Core does promote teaching to the test, and nowhere in the Common Core standards is this brought up. So by that logic, you can see that maybe their understanding of exactly what the Common Core standards of isn't clear, because if they had learned about it thoroughly, then they could see that there's nowhere in there where the teacher... Oh, time. The time you've already read it. My name is Brooklyn Brown, and I am still affirming this resolution. Um, just to um, go over a few points. First, our opponents insist that this system, the system of the Common Core, um, will take time. The question really is, how much time? This system will grow, but how much time? This system will, they claim that this system will grow and develop as we keep implementing it and as the states grow and be comfortable with it. However, um, it's been at a slow pace. It's 2009 was six years ago. Um, are we going to wait until the system will be a sinking ship that we have to get off of and find a quick solution to it? Uh, secondly, this program prepares children for college and workforce. However, opponents do not know the difference between prepared and being ready, as they say there is no difference. Just because uh, students have passed a few tests on reading and mathematics doesn't mean that they are ready to go to college or to go into the workforce. Leaving their house, living on their own, financially, um, financially supporting themselves and potentially a family afterwards, how is the Common Core going to help them with that? Um, another point that I can agree that the Common Core will not be implemented in private schools, which means not everyone will have the same um, Will have the same education as they believe the Common Core will do. 
this potentially nullifies the Common Core in its own self. There are students in public schools and students in private schools. Students who have more money or are more financially ready will be going into private schools, which means they might potentially be getting a better education in the first place because the Common Core is not present. Lastly, the affirmative believes um, and has stated twice that we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. If states are happier without the Common Core, and that's their pursuit of happiness, it's, and they say that it's upon the states whether or not this Common Core should be implemented, then why force it upon them? With that, I urge you to affirm, affirm this resolution. Thank you. The Common State Standards should be repealed by the United States Department of Education as a framework for teaching and learning. That is the conclusion of our debate. You may. <laughs>